So let's jump into it here. This is Christ-Centered Preaching by Brian Chappell, Redeeming the Expository Sermon. So this subtitle kind of focuses in on his perspective, Redeeming the Expository Sermon. Brian Chappell wants us to view expository preaching in kind of a new light from what he's fighting against. A lot of people view expository preaching as very dry and very slow, and Brian Chappell is trying to make the expository sermon come alive and be very interesting and pull people in and be something that people can connect with and learn from and truly come to love the art form. So his explanation of the purpose for the book is not to burden preachers with a new science of interpretation. He doesn't want people to get bogged down with trying to look at the Bible differently, but instead to release them to breach the grace of all Scripture that secures and enables relationship with the Savior. He wants to pull out how to be saved and then enabling that relationship, helping people to grow in their relationship with the Savior. So that's just kind of unlocking how you view Scripture to make it very accessible and usable. And then finally to finish it off, making preaching a joy to our hearts and a strength to God's people. He really talks about how you really can't enjoy and get strength from Scripture until you learn how to breach it through God's grace. So that's kind of where we're coming from here. Um, there's the, uh, I guess, the bibliography information for this book, if you'd like to find it. One of the main things that Brian Chappell develops in his book is this idea of the fallen condition focus. It really helps me develop, not just in my preaching, but it helps me develop as a person. Because when I see the fallen condition focus in Scripture, it makes even my personal Bible reading just come alive. So I've really enjoyed this. Um, the fallen condition focus is defined in his book. He says that the fallen condition focus is uh, the mutual human condition that contemporary believers share with those to or about whom the text was written that requires the grace of the passage for God's people to glorify and enjoy him. So this is the idea that we're in a different time period. We're in a different context than the people historically were. So when Paul wrote to the church at Corinth, he was really talking to a different group of people than we are today. But it opens it up so that we can understand how what he told them applies to us today. And then finding how the grace in that passage helps us now glorify God and helps us to be able to see the beautiful things about God and enjoy him. It, uh, it can also expose God's redemptive, sorry, it can expose God's redemptive purpose for his people in order to magnify his glory. There's kind of a lot there, but it's, it's building off that last statement. It shows God's redemptive purposes how he's going to save his people and redeem his creation in order that um, his glory will be magnified so that people will be able to see it so that he'll be glorified and so that it's like a, a magnifying glass brings a picture out, makes it bigger. We're magnifying his glory. The next thing that um, the guys in my preaching class might be more familiar with is this concept of state place prove. So uh, state place proof is just something you do in your, in your sermon. You're going to state what the Bible's saying. Just make a statement. Read a verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God gave his son. You state it. And then you place it. You show the audience, you show the congregation where you got that from in the text. So you make them encourage them to look down at their Bible if they have one, or you'll quote the scripture to them. Somehow you're going to locate it kind of geographically in the text where it's at. So you're going to state, God gave his son, and then you're going to read, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And then 
when you go to prove it, that's your explaining. So when you go to prove, you're explaining, you're illustrating, you're helping, you're helping people really grasp what it means and see what the purpose uh, for that passage is for them and how they can apply it in their own lives. And then uh, one more really big idea that I liked. This is something that's um, it stuck with me ever since I read this book back in high school. One of the main things that I thought of when I thought of this book, it's really not a big deal. It's not something he brings out a lot, but it's this 3 a.m. test. He mentions it when he's going over sermon unity. And the 3 a.m. test is super fun. And it's, it's kind of key for developing a sermon because it helps you keep the idea simple. So when your preacher is in bed, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. He's been working on his sermon this week. And he's getting ready to preach on Sunday. It is late Saturday night. So you run into your pastor's room and you shake him awake. And as he's bleary-eyed and sits up, you ask him, Preacher, what are you going to talk about on Sunday? What's the message? And the 3 a.m. test is what he would say about his message at 3 a.m. in the morning. It's kind of a way to develop your main takeaway or the big idea for your passage. And it's a good way to kind of tie things together. So the 3 a.m. test is something that's helped me kind of try to keep my thesis statements for my sermon, keep that big idea, my homiletical idea, keep it from being too complex or too complicated, and making it so that if someone woke me up at 3 a.m., I'd be able just to wake up and say what the purpose of my sermon is. So then it's got uh, organization. I'll just put up... Um, all the different parts of the book for you. He goes through these three different sections. He goes through uh, principles for expository preaching, just kind of explaining how it works. Um, in the principles, he goes over uh, what the sermon needs to be, how to prioritize the text, and what it takes to exposit scripture, how to bring out what the Bible is saying. So he kind of goes over, it's almost, it's almost the uh, philo philosophical side that you have to have coming into it and how to view scripture to start with. And then the part two goes over preparations for expository preaching. So here, this is how you prepare and study and get yourself ready to preach the word of God. Uh, it goes through how you have to start out in prayer and seeking God's will and looking at the text and seeing what is he communicating to his people. And that's kind of, as he's explaining the preparation for expository preaching, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road, and he kind of shows how to use the following condition focus to help you develop your messages. And then in part three, he goes over the theology of Christ-centered messages. So there's kind of a concept behind preaching with Christ at the center of every message. Uh, not that you want to... Uh, begin doing eisegesis and reading Christ into everything, but that all of Scripture is about Christ and bringing out what component of Christ is there and how, um, how God is addressing man's fallen condition in that passage and glorifying himself. So he kind of goes over the, the theological side, why it's right, um, why it's, the, it's really the best method to use for Christ-centered preaching and how you're really going to connect with people through Christ-centered preaching and proving that from the Bible. So really good things about this book. I think I've been super positive here. So uh, bear, bear with me if I seem too excited about this stuff, but uh, it was a really good book. I enjoyed it. Uh, first off, it has awesome information. It's just a really good guidebook to help you understand how to preach and help develop your preaching. Um, from my perspective, where I'm looking at this book, I'm kind of a, in the beginning stages of preaching. Um, and this book really goes on to develop some things that would be beneficial for a lot of experienced, more knowledgeable preachers. So it's got really good information. He makes it accessible. It's well organized so that you can find all the different things that are in this, this book and bring it out and really look at it. Um, 
sometimes I'm reading a book and the speaker gets down and and really it gets confusing and complicated and things start kind of weaving together and it turns into just a mush in my head. And that doesn't do anybody good. So something that Chapel does really well here is he brings out a good organization structure that helps me understand what he's saying. And I really appreciated that in this book. Also, it's Bible-focused. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this point, but the way he just drills into Scripture and helps you to get the focus on putting the Bible and what it's saying first is super good. I really enjoyed it. And I think that's beneficial for anybody reading. Also, it's Christ-centered. The book is showing how to keep Christ first and foremost in your messages, how to keep him first in your life. He talks about the ethos and the pathos of the speaker and how your actions and the way you live your life actually impact your audience as much and sometimes even more than your actual messages. So if you're Christ-centered in your life and you're Christ-centered in your messages and you're Christ-centered in how you interact with people, everything in your ministry and your preaching will be benefited. Also, this book's really fun to read. He keeps his language interesting and moving. Like I said, he doesn't really get bogged down or let it turn to mush, but he keeps it interesting, has good illustrations, even makes it personal at times. You feel like you're kind of getting to know chapel as you go. Um, it's easily accessible. He uses simple English. Um, whenever he introduces a new term, he explains it. It's not something that is on a, a PhD level or, or a real hard read. It's, it's easily accessible. It's really clear. Kind of went over that already. And so with the pros, it's, like I said, really good book. I really enjoyed it. The con side is it's kind of hard for me to come up with. But I found some people that were concerned that it's too Christ-centered. And this is, this is what I mean by that. Like I mentioned before, some people are concerned that with Christ-centered preaching, you're reading Christ into every passage. You're eisegeting Christ into every passage. So, say you're reading about spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians 12, and you're going through uh, how the gifts are there and how love is the greatest gift. And um, going through that way, he's not necessarily talking about Christ the entire time. Or even if you go to uh, like an Old Testament narrative and you read about Mary, or not Mary, about Eve picking the fruit from the tree. Christ really isn't in that passage. So putting Christ into that is really not beneficial. Or even when you're reading through numbers and you're just getting um, you're just getting lists of people who are alive and who was the father of whom. People think that going through all that stuff in a Christ-centered way um, isn't doing justice to the text. Personally, I really see how Christ can be can be the center of those messages. Eve picking the fruit. That led up to God promising Christ coming. Or uh, the spiritual gifts, they're gifts from whom? They're gifts from Christ. So there's, there's ways that all these things tie in. Probably the hardest thing for someone who wants to preach expositorily might be the idea of coming from numbers. But I wouldn't say that's a big issue. But just something to be aware of. Um, that is an issue some people have with it. But I think Brian Chapel kind of covers well how to do it tastefully and still let Scripture uh, have its way. Let the text say what it's trying to say without forcing Christ onto the text. But when you come to the text with the right attitude, Christ will rise out of it and you'll see how it applies to Christ. Some people find the fallen condition focus to be too negative or too dark. Looking at a passage like 1 Corinthians uh, 13 that talks about love from a fallen condition focus might seem kind of negative, but 
as I've as I've read Chapel's book and I've learned more about how he views the fallen condition focus, I see how it can be applied to passages like this, where we have a fallen state and how um, the positive side of you know, you guys need to have love, and this is what love is, also has a negative side. Christ is trying to help us to love the way he loves because we are fallen. We don't love people properly like we should. So having this fallen condition focus will help make the rubber meet the road in people's personal lives. When you say, uh, you just need to love people, you're like, yeah, everyone needs to love people. But if you make it, put a little bit of a, a negative edge on that, look at the fallen side that it's focusing on, you can push people to see where they aren't loving people and see how that needs to change to be more like Christ. So overall, I really see the fallen condition focus as being a positive um, impact, especially in a message where a little bit of um, tension goes a long way. So the, the fallen condition focus overall, in my opinion, is actually really good. But these are just some things that people might see as negative sides. Um, also on this, the, the list of pros that I should have put in there, it's not a super long book. I mean, it's, it's got fairly large print and it's less than 400 pages. And it went by really fast for me. I enjoyed it. Um, but who would I recommend this book for? I would point parishioners, uh, just common church people, lay people, anyone who's interested in teaching the Word of God um, would really benefit from this. Even ladies looking to teach Sunday school or uh, teenagers that are interested in getting involved in, in some level of um, you know, kids' work, youth work, even working at a camp. Anyone who's involved in teaching the Bible or Scripture is going to benefit from this book. Also, especially young men studying for ministry. This is my preaching class. This is the guys I'm targeting this video for. You guys would really get a lot out of this book. Honestly, as I read this book, I noticed a lot of things that um, the class that I took last semester on preaching used as source material. So a lot of what's in this book, you've already... Uh, seen before, you're familiar with it. That was last sem semester's preaching class, and so I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. And then lastly, I think experienced pastors would be able to use this a lot. Um, my grandpa would refer to this book regularly, and like I said, he'd been preaching for, you know, 30 years by the time he got the book, and when he recommended it to me, he had another 10 years of experience so this is, this is a book he went to a lot. I'm actually really, really blessed because I've got my grandpa's copy and I think that's awesome. So this is, this is a book that people on all levels could benefit from. It doesn't matter if you're just preaching Sunday school, you're teaching uh, kids, you're going to youth group, or you're teaching, um, you're teaching in a, a broader church context to adults. What's in this book is going to be really available for you, really accessible, very interesting. And so I'd give this book a high recommendation. I'd give it five out of five stars. So final thoughts. In this book, it focuses on how Christ is the main fi figure in Scripture. He has to remain central in studying the Bible. And also he has to remain central in teaching the Bible. So throughout the whole process of approaching scripture, reading it, studying it, presenting it, Christ has to remain at the center or else you're losing the power behind the words. So it's this is a really good book. I enjoyed it. I'd recommend it to all you guys. This concludes my review. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I look forward to hearing what some of you guys may think of this book. Maybe some of you have already read it or you uh, are looking to read it in the future. If you do read it, please uh, just hit me up, send me a text or email or something. Just let me know what you thought of it. Personally, I really enjoyed this book and uh, just curious to see what you guys think. Anyway, thank you very much. 
Hope you guys have a good rest of your day, and we'll talk to you all later.